Hi everybody, it's Heather from Sister Wigs and this is a request that I wanted to make good on. Makeup brushes and some of the trial and error <laughs> that I've experienced buying makeup brushes, what some of my favorite brushes are, and how to use them. So I don't have any makeup on, I've got a little bit of moisturizer on, but that is it. I will not be applying makeup in this video though because I'm actually making this video to sort of like gear up to make another installment of Have I Got Nudes For You, another nude eyeshadow palette review. This is about brushes and it's going to be kind of long-winded. If you're not really interested in learning about makeup brushes, you know, go ahead and skip this one. <laughs> it's fine. Just know that I will remember our time fondly and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So uh, also I am not a makeup artist, which means I don't, I don't actually put makeup on other people's faces. So you want to bear that in mind when taking advice from somebody like me. And it's a disclaimer that I wish more like YouTubers would give, honestly, because, um, you know, I, I think that that is the biggest distinction between somebody who's an MUA and somebody makeup artist and somebody who, um, is just really good at applying it on themselves for camera is that uh, an actual MUA puts this stuff on other people and can really bring out the best in other people. And um, particularly in a post-COVID universe, um, I, I'm definitely just putting this stuff on myself. So kind of bear that in mind. You're going to have to know how my facial features in particular um, kind of play a role in how I select my brushes and why I like the brushes I like. And I might go into some detail um, when uh, necessary here. But um, in general, just know, you know, I, I, I have, uh, I'm 40 years old. <laughs> I just turned 40. Um, I have uh, really good natural brow arches. You know, they don't grow big and fluffy, so they're not super trendy right now, but I have a really well-defined arch, so huzzah for that. Um, I also am acne prone. You can see some up here and up here and, you know, under my chin. Uh, that's a thing. Um, I take excruciatingly good care of my skin. <laughs> um, and that is really key to making any makeup work for you. If your canvas is parched as the desert and uh, is not really um, smooth, you're going to have a difficult time with makeup. So skincare and makeup are like this. You gotta, you gotta have a good uh, skincare regimen and you have to be religious about it. As in, don't skip it. Um, that's single number one best advice I could give to anybody, regardless of age, complexion, whatever. Find a skincare routine that works for you, which is easier said than done, granted. And then stick to it. Don't skip it. Don't, don't slack or get, you know, fall asleep on it. Make sure that you are very good about maintaining your skin. And a lot of what I do with my makeup routine is trying to get that right balance because I have combination skin and I'm acne prone, but my skin's also dry because I'm 40. <laughs> um, I, I have to uh, strike that right harmony between, you know, having the right amount of moisturizer on my skin and, and you know, still having a nice smooth application. If you go with too much, and this is important information for novices, particularly if you have combination skin or issues with your makeup staying on for, for the whole day. If you have issues with your, your um, makeup wearing off midday, chances are you probably have oily skin, right? Or you have skin where it's dry and you're over applying the wrong kind of moisturizers and they're not sinking in because, you know, greasy moisturizers will make that makeup, particularly foundations and, and, and powder makeup, break down and they always kind of travel southward throughout the day and get kind of streaky looking and you'll get that crease little line up here in, in, in your eye fold um, if, if you don't have a monolid where, you know, it, it kind of like says, hi, I have a lot of eyelid sweat or whatever. I mean, what, what you may not know is that this is the, if you get that line here, right, that, that's usually a telltale sign that you are prone to having slightly oily skin. And this is like the canary in the coal mine because your eyelids produce slightly more sebum. So they're a little oilier in general than the rest of your face is going to be. That's an important detail. Um, so if you don't get that line, chances are you have kind of dry skin full stop, um, or you might have a combination of both. But again, you, you, you want to make sure that you get a good skincare regimen full stop. Um, and I, I've, I've 
I've, I've heard uh, stories of woe from people who, you know, apply a ton and ton and ton of moisturizer and then cannot get their makeup to sit properly. And it's the moisturizer that's doing that. Likewise, if you can't control the oil production, then a lot of your makeup selections and the, the things you use to apply the makeup are going to have to be geared towards working around the oil and trying to make the most of it, to absorb it, to, to make it so it's a little bit less likely to make your makeup deteriorate throughout the day. And if you're like me, you'll notice as you get older, your makeup tends to stay in place a little better <laughs> than when you're younger. Probably because if you're like me, you've got your skincare down. I mean, my, my fingers are so moisturized that they're barely able to snap, right? Uh, but, you know, the other thing is, is that, you know, you're not producing as much oil as a teenager. So that stuff tends, tends to stay there. Okay. So that little disclaimer aside, let's get into brushes. Um, I have a lot of brushes. I mean, I know I, that, that a lot of people collect makeup. I collect makeup. Um, a lot of people collect brushes too, and I'm one of those. So I've owned a lot of brushes. And if you want the real tea on where the best place to shop for brushes it, uh, is, go to Beautylish. They have amazing brushes um, and a lot of selection. And make sure you go in with a budget because you'll be very inclined to blow it. <laughs> so definitely uh, kind of research a little bit before you buy anything. So before I go any further, I would like to briefly describe what exactly you're looking at when you're looking at a makeup brush. So as you can see from this handy dandy diagram that, you know, some of these are going to look like very, very familiar terms. Um, obviously bristles, the hairs of the brush. Um, what you may not have known is that the tip of it is often called the toe. The heel of it is, is basically where you can almost imagine the connection between the handle and the bristles of the brush happens. That's where it tends to be kind of bound in place. Then you've got the ferrule, um, which is um, that metal component that sort of binds everything together. Um, on some of the premium brushes I have, you'll notice that they don't have a separate metal piece where that ferrule is. But what you have to imagine is there, even, even when it, there's not a clear delineation on the brush between the handle and the ferrule, is that the ferrule is where all that binding occurs. And it's what basically holds the whole brush together. And of course, the handle is what you hold when you apply. So I'd like to start off by talking about the differences between natural fiber brushes. Um, so this is a Chikahodo brush. This is part of their Z series. The Z, Z series is incredibly premium and they're very, very good. Um, this is one of my all time favorite blending brushes and it's made with blue squirrel hair. So this is a natural fiber brush. I have also have a whole collection of synthetic brushes and I keep them separate. Um, I have, I have even more than that. I have them all organized. I wash them after every single use. Um, and be careful when you're washing them, by the way. I recommend using something like Sephora's dry shampoo um, for the, the makeup brushes. I believe they call it um, dry clean is what I think they call it. That stuff works great. Parisian Spirit also works really nicely, but you have to be careful how much of that you use because um, it's kind of an emollient and that's what breaks up the makeup. But cleaning your makeup brushes is very important and you want to make sure that you're not going to submerge the whole brush. That is basically a surefire fire recipe for destroying your makeup brushes, particularly your natural hair ones. A synthetic brush like this MAC 221, the fibers are non-absorbent. So they're not going to um, absorb any of the makeup, much like a synthetic wig doesn't absorb moisture from the environment. But a natural hairbrush will absorb some of the product. You can guarantee it. So it gives a lighter application. And um, one might argue that depending on the kind of makeup you're using, if you use a synthetic brush, you're basically just pushing the product around. <laughs> I find that these bristles are a lot uh, softer. On the, on the natural brushes, depending on the brand. I mean, I own some Smith brushes. These are made in Canada, but um, they tend to be a little bit um, scratchy. And the older I get, the more I tend to gravitate towards these really, really, really soft brushes, not only because they give you a slightly um, 
more diffuse blown out application so that way you end up with a softer look overall which is great particularly if you're working with really bold colors so that way you don't look like a clown right um but uh you know in a pinch or if you're concerned about you know cruelty synthetic brushes are still a really viable alternative and i use them for a lot of things particularly cream based makeup i love synthetic brushes for cream-based makeup because, as I mentioned, they don't absorb any of the product. You want to avoid, um, with most natural hair brushes, you want to avoid using cream-based makeup because it might damage the bristles. Let's talk about what the head shapes look like. I'm just going to grab some random brushes. These are all synthetic, by the way. Okay, so this is a Sigma domed utility brush, which is a really great example of a domed makeup brush. Okay, can you just see what we mean by domed? I'm gonna, I'm turning it a little bit. You can see that it's literally the same all the way around and it's got a rounded end to it. Okay, so this is one you can use for a whole bunch of different reasons and that's why they call it a utility brush. You can use it on your eyes, though I wouldn't because it's a little bit um, stiff and um, the bristles are incredibly compact. And if you don't know what I mean by that, let me break out that um, blending brush by Chikahoto uh, that I just broke out. Now see when I touch this, how it yields to my touch and it just kind of gives and how it's kind of fluffy. See how that is not at all fluffy? And when I touch it, even with my nail with a lot of pressure, it doesn't give right? So they're going to be used for different things. I would argue you should stick to softer brushes, generally speaking, when you're using them on your eye, just to avoid pulling and tugging and abrasions and irritating your sensitive eye area. But these domed brushes still have really great utility. Let's say, for example, you get a little bit of extra creasing here on the side of your nose where your foundation is just kind of caked in there. Uh, 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 uh. You smooth that out with this brush. It goes right in that area beautifully on me. Um, you can use this to spot concealer. Let's say you have a teeny tiny little zit, like up here. Boop, boop, boop. I don't prime my lids with concealer. Um, I think that that is a recipe for ending up with that crease right here every time. I don't prime with foundation or concealer on my eye. Um, I use eyeshadow primer and a little bit of powder, and then I apply my eye makeup. And that's because my eyelids are quite oily. I have combination skin. So you can see I, I even get zits up here, right? <laughs> I don't have that many down here because it's, it's a little bit drier down here. But like here is where I get them. And then up here and on my forehead, I tend to get them, which is, it makes sense because there are more hair follicles up here and more sebum production in general. So we've got dome brushes and fluffy brushes, but there's a lot of wiggle room in between. We've got this puppy here, which is the Pro All Over Shadow Brush by Sephora. And you can see that this one's kind of flat, almost like a paddle. And it is slightly rounded at the tip. So it's, it's, a, it's slightly domed, you know, but not a full dome because obviously it's not a round brush head. It's flat on one side. So this is theoretically made to do this, but I find that this brush is too large for my eyelid area. I've got a little bit of, I mean, not a whole lot. It's a little worse on this side, but I have a little bit of a hood developing over here because age, right? And so I don't have enough eye space to really get the most out of this brush a lot of the time. So what I generally use this one for, um, if I do use it, which is not very frequently, I use this basically just to kind of apply very light things like uh like one of the uh, chroma uh, chroma crystals that's it from natasha denona they're sheer you know sometimes this will this picks up beautifully and i can just kind of gently pat that in if i don't want to get glitter all over my finger and use my finger to do it um and while this one is a sweeper and you can use it like that and and frankly i like the size of it better than the sephora sweeper which is why i'm mentioning it like, because on a hooded eye, you don't have a lot of eye space below where that hood is. And this, you want smaller brush heads to kind of go up in there without it all going up here. Transfer is a big problem with hoods. You know, like if you have naturally hooded eyes or you just have a little bit of age related, like I do, like transfer from here. Like if you've got a really bold shade all the way up to here where it just kind of goes all over the place and bleeds. 
you can avoid that by using the right tools and the right priming routine. So I highly recommend these sort of um, brushes. I wouldn't necessarily use a synthetic brush like this Makeup Forever one for up here because it's just literally gonna smear it around because this is a non-absorbent brush and it and it and it's very smooth. You can actually feel it that the bristles on this are a little bit cheaper. Still great for certain uses though. Like I like this one literally for um, applying concealer, which is what it's made for, which is why those brushes are so slick. Cause let's say I got this big zit that keeps coming back over here. I just go boop, 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 boop. Um, so there's that. We've got, you know, things that are kind of like in between where they are slightly rounded on top and then flat. Another domed one. So you can see a lot of these have very similar shapes. And I gravitate towards ones that have kind of weird, wacky shapes sometimes, like um, to kind of flesh out my collection. So this is actually a Morphe M321. Uh, and it's virtually the same all the way around. It's kind of like a hybrid between a concealer brush, so like an arrowhead brush. It's got fluffy in it. <laughs> And one of these domed bad boys. So you can kind of see it's like the crazy love child of, of those kind of designs. You know, they're usually marketed as concealer brushes. They tend to be very um, compact. And they're almost always synthetic, though I do have... Um, like, this is actually one of my favorites. This is a another Smith brush. And it's got the same design. And this is a natural hair brush. I believe that this is um, goat hair. Um, but but much softer, but still same shape and whatnot. And you might be like, why why do they make them in this shape? What's up with that? Well, it's because it gives you that precision at the tip while also giving you the option to, because they're flat, they're all flat, right? So they give you the option to lay stuff down. So they're very versatile. You can, I, I use the Smith one in particular because it's soft. I use it to lay stuff down in my eye in really precise areas. And so, um, you know, the sky is the limit. You can do a ton of stuff with these brushes, um, but just pay attention to the shapes of the heads and it'll kind of inform you about what they're made for. This is another one of my favorite brushes. And this is a synthetic brush. This is a MAC 275, kind of like an unsung hero for hooded lids. Um, I love this because not only, like let's say you wanna go with kind of a monochromatic eyeshadow look. You don't want to layer on a, a bunch of different colors. You just want one color that's applied well. This is a great brush for that because it's it's diffuse enough and soft enough that you can actually use it as a sweeper. But because of this angled component and the fact that it's flat, and so I, I mean I don't see many beauty gurus using these angled eyeshadow brushes, but I love them. Um, you can actually turn this in a whole bunch of different directions and use it very, very... Um, in a very versatile fashion. So like you can use it up in your crease, you can do the back and forth motion here with this brush very easily. If you wanna do this on the edges, you can do that very easily here too. You can move it in a round fashion to blend, though I, I prefer, um, you know, let's show you. Like I said, I like this uh, Chikahoto eyeshadow brush for that much better. Um, I think it's softer, it gives a much more soft blown out appearance. Um, I also am, and this is one you, you, you're going to have a difficult time finding, um, so my apologies in advance. All right, I found it. This is a MAC 217 brush. This is a natural hair brush. It is no longer being made. In fact, MAC no longer makes any of their natural hair brushes. But um, this this version of this brush I really love because it's, it's flat, it's fluffy, it's really, really fluffy, which makes it a good blending brush. And it's great for going up in here. You know, you just take that flat edge, kind of rest it up against your eye, tilt up a little bit because, you know, hooding. And you want to go like that, just back and forth, back and forth until it's nicely blended in place. Um, this brush is hard to track down because, like I said, they stopped making it. But they are there are doppelgangers on the market that are very similar. So here are three brushes that will get you really, really similar results to this 217 if you can't find it okay um we first got the Wayne Goss 18 very similar flat ferrule okay right here and we'll accomplish the same thing and again it's made of goat hair so very nice and soft we'll, we'll achieve similar things 
The uh, Sonia G Worker Pro, very similar to the MAC 217 brush. And I mean, same shape and everything. Again, made with goat hair. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, if you have hooding, you want smaller brush heads. Smaller brush heads so you can lay that down in a way where it won't transfer onto your hood and all over the rest of your lid. So this might be a better alternative if you have hooding. This is the Soft Shader by Sonya G. It's part of the Sky set, which is very similar to this beautiful iconic red set, but smaller brush heads. A little bit less hair also on the brushes, but similar shape in, in all regards. So these are all great doppelgangers if you want a replacement for this discontinued Mac 217. Okay. But again, those brushes, they're, they're flat, they are fluffy, and they're made to help you blend out your crease. But you could also do that with this 275, which is a synthetic brush. So if you're looking for a good workhorse brush where you don't have to buy a whole bunch and you can do a lot with it, I highly recommend getting yourself a nice angled synthetic brush because look how I can actually push this up in here and over like that. I can cover a lot of area or a little, depending on how I turn the brush. Um, I can also, and one of the things I love to do the most with this is once I get a little bit of dramatic color here in my crease, just pull down. That's all you need to do. The brush is already shaped in a way where you can pull down and get that little triangle here. That's lovely. Before I move on uh, and away from blending brushes, because to me, blending brushes are the trickiest. They're the hardest um, because they, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and you can do a lot of different things with them. But as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, if you find one that's got a really versatile shape that you can do a lot with, like this MAC 275, you don't need a whole set unless you want to get really adventurous with it. But I mean, I've got... But I want to show you that all of these have something in common. Well, I'll bring out the big, the big one here I have here and maybe this one here. Um, and these are both Wayne Goss brushes. Um, this is a three and this is a 16. Okay, so this is part of his eye set. And this is basically um, his brand's equivalent to something like the Z series brush that I mentioned earlier from Chikahoto. So they're all fluffy. Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. And in most cases, they're going to be slightly domed, just like this Wayne Goss, br Gosh, Wayne Goss brush or this Chikahoto. But here, you can see that this one has a point to it, even though the ferrule is round. So it's a nice rounded brush. It's It's got a point to it. What do you think that's for? That's for your crease. Almost all of these are meant to give you a different way to blend your crease. Um, this is to blend in a very precise fashion right in that crease area. And it, it feels really great because, I mean, if you want really deep color, like a dark, dark color, but you only want it in a really specific location, and I'll do it on my hooded eye so you can kind of see, and I'll turn to the side. These, these blending brushes with the point to them, they blend all the way around the edge, but they'll deposit a concentrated amount of color where that tip is. And by the way, how you hold your brushes, where you hold them, the length of the handle and the amount of pressure you apply will all change the way that your, your eye makeup goes on. Um, so let's say you want a very loose application. You don't want the color to be really concentrated. You'll want to hold the brush further out so less pressure is being utilized. And your, the angle of application also matters, right? Because it's an art. So you want to make sure that, you know, if say you've got a hooded crease, and you're trying to blend up a little bit to give yourself maximum space between your eyelashes and your crease to blend up. That's why I love these brushes, these Chikahotos, uh, This uh, they call it, it's just their blend brush. And you can just kind of go like that up at an angle. I'm actually holding the brush down so that the head is actually pointing upward. You know what I mean? So you might see that in some of my videos where I'm doing that and I'm just blending at this angle over and over and over again because I want to, you know, create a shadow that's higher than my natural crease on that hooded eye so that they balance each other out because you can see this one doesn't really, I mean, it's still slightly hooded. It's a little bit, a little bit of skin here, but not, not that much. Here though, it's pretty dramatic. I lost over a hundred pounds. I did not realize I had fat eyelids and unevenly fat eyelids at that, but now I'm acutely aware. So thank you, weight loss. <laughs> Um, 
So that's a crash course in blending brushes. I'm gonna move on to other kinds of brushes now. I would say that the other brushes are not nearly as complicated as going over eyeshadow brushes. Maybe that's just me. But um, you know, we got the old standby. We got the beauty blender. I don't buy the $20 beauty blenders. It's so unnecessary. I go on Amazon, these are three bucks and they work beautifully. Um, ColourPop also makes some very uh, nice sponges and they have a whole bunch of textured sponges to, you know depending on if you want to use a textured sponge this one's like a velvet angled sponge um that i got from color pop and i paid for all this by the way so it's not like they sent it to me but i mean i know that for example nikki tutorials loves using a velvet um beauty blender <sighs> I think, I think part of that is because if you use extremely full coverage makeup, like you beat a full, full, full coverage face, you kind of need something with more texture like a velvet sponge to give you the appearance of skin because your makeup is going to completely cover up every single pore on anywhere it's applied. I try not to apply that much product. And in fact, lately I've been experimenting with um, combining and mixing foundations because I got really frustrated because for one I couldn't find one that matched my skin tone for, for anything um even with all the options out there Fenty and all that stuff there's just nothing that's perfect and that's not abnormal unfortunately um <laughs> we're all special in our own way but no the but what I've been doing is I've been mixing them and I've been trying to mix like anything that's full coverage with you know perhaps something that's a little bit more like medium to light coverage to give me a slightly dewy look but while still giving me good coverage of this without me having to bathe in color corrector which is pretty pretty um yeah, it's a thing. So beauty blenders were great. Um, I don't always use a beauty blender. Sometimes I will um, use a brush to apply foundation. You know, it, angled brushes are also nice, particularly if you're trying to apply just a little bit of color in this area here. And the order of application, by the way, should be do all of your creams and your liquids first. Do all that stuff first, because as soon as you apply powder, you can't go back in with more liquid stuff. So if you're like me and you collect brushes, you're basically going to use most of the synthetic brushes for your routine right up, up front, and then everything else is gonna to pivot to natural when you start doing your eye makeup, or depending on your order of operations. But just know, you wanna lay all that stuff down that's liquid and cream first, and then put your powders on to set, and then any more powder makeup, like bronze or anything like that, has to go on over that powder. Um, you do not want to necessarily like, you know, use a powder foundation and then a cream blush. You will end up with pilling, uneven application, and it might just go throughout the day. Um, it's not it's not cute. Experiment with it if you realize that you have a lot of issues with pilling and stuff. Another thing that might be suspicious is your primer. If you're using a primer that's got a lot of silicone in it, that can also lead to a lot of pilling. But the one that I've been using lately, which I highly recommend if you have um, dry skin um, and texture due to how dry it is, is this Tatcha stuff this is their the liquid silk canvas it it uh, it absorbs so well primers can come in one and two one of two major categories they're either going to be um pore filling so they they correct the texture um if you've got a lot of zits or something they might make them worse but they'll but they'll cover all that stuff up a little bit so you get a smoother application that's really great if you have like um, oily skin that is really prone to breakouts. Um, I, I use that once in a while too because of the same reason, um, particularly whenever Aunt Irma comes to town, you know. But uh, with, with this stuff, it works best if you have dry skin and, you know, you, no matter how much moisturizer you apply, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be enough <laughs> before you put your makeup on to keep it really nice and dewy looking. Um, the thing I like about this is, is that, you know, you don't want to apply a bunch of extra moisturizer right before you apply your makeup because as I mentioned towards the beginning of this video sometimes those products can actually make your makeup just fall right off um, because oil breaks makeup down over time and makes it you know prone to wearing off rubbing off falling off going right melting off but this stuff is great because it is such a light sort of moisturizer and you could consider this more of a moisturizer even than a primer it's it's perfect for putting under under your makeup because it it doesn't form a film so it's it doesn't have a lot of silicone in it i don't think it's got any at all and it it just leaves everything feeling really nice and smooth so you could even just use this as 
a treatment even. You could just put this on and nothing else and it will, it'll blur a little bit and, and make everything feel really nice and hydrated without being greasy or, or weighed down. So love this stuff. Cannot recommend it enough if, if you've got aging or dry skin. So I know not everyone digs fan brushes, right? I mean, I, I, I've heard that there's a bit of a debate going on. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Some people don't understand why you would need them. Just like a lot of beauty YouTubers don't advocate using primer, right? They don't see the point of it. Give it 20 years. <laughs> That's all I have to tell those 20 something uh, YouTubers who make these videos and don't believe in primer. Give it time. Your skin will change <laughs> and you will be singing its praises to the, the you know, high hilltops just like I was. Promise. Okay, they're, they're, you'll, you'll find the reason soon enough. Give it time. And, and I know, side note, so many people, like I hear the, the young people on Reddit and stuff like they're like, we take so much better care of them like previous generations. And I'm like, this isn't Victorian times, like back when people didn't even have mirrors in their home. And uh, I, I, I think that a lot of them think that they're going to be able to use like really high end skincare products and like Botox and stuff to never age. Nah, -uh. nah, -uh. embrace the age. Don't be anti-aging because it happens to everybody. Embrace the age and just try to do it well. Just try to do it well. Don't be scared of it. Cheers to aging, everyone. So anyway, fan brushes. You can see here I've got three different kinds of fan brushes on display with three different shapes to them and sizes and, and brush density. Um, we've got this Sonia G Sculpt 3, and I have more fan brushes, but these are just examples of how different they can be. This uh, is a Sculpt 3 by Sonia G, and it's kind of a precision fan brush. Yes, you can have such a thing. Um, and you can see what I mean because it's got a very, very pancake flat, crepe thin kind of edge to it. So this is one of the things I like to use for highlighter. I like to use it to get a really precise highlighter application right here. It's still fluffy. It's still a fluffy brush. It's just got a really nice tapered very, very, very structured edge to it, but it's still really nice and soft. I believe that this is also goat hair and it, you know, I can get it right up here because when you highlight, you don't want to highlight right where your bone is. I, I do not have high cheekbones, for example, <laughs> like they're down here. I like to go slightly above because it gives a lifted appearance and brightens up the eye. And then if I want to really make it nice diffuse application, once I'm done putting that color on, I go back in like that to kind of smooth it out. So lo I love fan brushes for this kind of stuff. I mean, theoretically you could use um, something like this, this Smith 112 as a highlighter brush. It's got a really nice small domed brush head, fluffy, natural hair. But I, I like the uh, precision you get with the fan brushes. Um, this is another really good one. Um, this is a Wayne Goss 15. Again, it's uh, goat hair. And I like to use this one for bronzer down here because it's a little fluffier, right? So with highlighter, you want a little bit of a, a precise application. You want a small brush head because it's a small area. You're basically carving it out here, right? With the bronzer or your contour or your blusher. You don't want to put the highlight right on top of your blusher. So you want, it's a smaller area to work with. So you want to use a smaller brush head basically. And say, the same thing goes, by the way, with crease brushes on, on your eyeshadows. As the colors um, get darker, you want to make sure that you use smaller and progressively smaller and smaller brush heads so you don't overwhelm that small area with a lot of color. It'll just end up looking muddy. This, by the way, is a Sonia G Sculpt 4. She's got a whole series of sculpting brushes, and this is very dense. It's got an angle to it. It's still fluffy, but it's also still got a little, it's like a, it's like in between these two when it comes to that edge, you know, it's, it's fluffy, but it's a lot thicker and fatter. This is great for using darker colored contour without it over applying. You know, you just, I like to kind of angle it this way. 
just kind of hit it that way and then do that to blend it out. Um, and I, you know, you could also find fan brushes. This is a very unique one. This, I can't, I don't even know who makes this one. Um, but uh, this is another Japanese brush. And I use this one because it's so diffuse and so fluffy and so soft. I believe this is Gray Squirrel, um, which my husband and I actually advocate looking for Gray Squirrel brushes to control their population, particularly in England, because they like to bully and kill all of the red squirrels, which are adorable. So I don't even feel bad about that. Um, but yeah, I use this to kind of brush away excess baking powder or, you know, fallout. It's really good for that. So, I mean, all of these brushes, they can have all kinds of different uses. And I think if nothing else, I would like to impart upon you uh, that, you know, these brushes may tell you this is a contour brush, right? So it's made for contour. And that may, in fact, be its ideal purpose. But that's not the only thing you have to use it for. They're your brushes. Do what you want with them. Play around. See what works the best. And that way you can develop your holy grail set of, of the ones that will work the best for you. I love this brush. I love this brush. This is my powder brush. Look at that handle. Look at it. It's like little tasty gems. Hand painted. This is a Chikahoto brush as well. It's, it's a cheek brush. They actually have face brushes that are even fluffier than this. I just use this as my powder brush, even though it's technically a blush brush, because I have all kinds of, of other brushes. And I have, by the way, a synthetic big fluffy powder brush that I hardly ever use. Like I use it once in a while if I really want a nice matte finish and I kind of swirl it around. But I, I find that I don't really need a brush this big. And this, by the way, is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Lux Jumbo Powder. Um, I don't really use it that much. I mean, with sometimes with my um, powder foundations, I'll use this, which is the Tarte brush, which, by the way, is very cheaply made, but feels great and works really well. It's really, uh, look at how compact all those bristles are. That's why this is a great powder brush, um, especially for powder foundations, mineral foundations and stuff like that. I mean, yes, you will, you will use more product because this brush is a monster and it will swallow a lot of it up, but it will prevent it from being caked on there, which is good if you have that issue one. I love this brush and it's a bargain when it comes to natural hair brushes. This is the Wayne Goss Airbrush. I'm not a, a huge fan of all of Wayne Goss's brushes. I like some of them better than others. This is a beautiful brush and it's like 32 bucks, which sounds like a lot, but when you're talking natural hair brushes, keep in mind that a big fluffy uh, face brush, so, so the big companion to this one is too ritzy for my blood. It's like 400 something dollars. So, you know, these can get astronomically expensive in the natural hair brushes. They can get really ridiculous. And that's why I, I don't, like if I find something that works for that purpose and doesn't get me into that price point, I'm good. This is $32. So when I say it's a good deal, trust me, I've been shopping around for these for a while. This is, this is a great bargain. Um, it's available at Beautylish. And I use it for precision baking. I use it to lay down powder in a really precise fashion under my eye so I don't end up over applying. That is one area. I mean, I see beauty influencers on YouTube just put a ton of powder under their eyes. And if you are of a certain age group, that is a bad, 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 bad idea. You do not want to do a full crazy bake. Because if you put too much powder down here, it will just dry everything out. And it will make all those fine lines look so much more obvious. Where, you know, and, and I don't want to say you should never bake. I mean, I know that there are some, um, some very competent, brilliant, actually, makeup artists that never bake and tell, tell people they should never, ever bake. I like baking particularly with a blurring powder, I think that it can actually help um, neutralize some of these dark circles. I have very round eyes that are kind of deeply set and I have very, very dark circles under my eyes. Um, some days are, are better than others. Today's is, today is a pretty good eye day, but, but some days this is really bad. And, you know, baking helps kind of minimize that a little bit more. It's just, you wanna be careful how much powder you're using. You know, particularly if you if you have sensitive eyes, because too much powder will will irritate your eyes. So 
I love this brush for baking and I use it almost exclusively for laying that kind of powder down. Um, and then of course I go back in afterwards after it's done soaking that up with this brush and kind of sweep it away. Because I mean, look at how soft that is, how it just kind of bends immediately with just a little bit of gentle pressure. Other than that, I can't think of much else to, to go on about. Um, I also use, I, I like to use this. This is another Chikahoto, um blush brush. You don't need to use any of these brushes, by the way. I, I mean, synthetic brushes, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes too. So you can use this information to find really nice synthetic brushes. Um, and I have quite a few synthetic brushes. Morphe actually makes some pretty decent synthetic brushes, as does Sigma. But, uh, and they're inexpensive. Um, but but you can see the difference. This is their cheek and highlight from Chikahoto, and this is their like premium. I mean, look at the handle again. Premium cheek brush. But I mean, this is a great size for me. It's small. I like to use bright colored br blusher. So the last thing I want is to apply it literally all over my face. <laughs> like I want it in a really precise area that's like slightly above and behind where the apple of my cheek is. And then I like to blend it out a little bit. But I, I mean, I don't put it right here like I'm a, a toddler because that will just weigh my face down and so I like the smaller brush head okay that was one of my hairs and not one of the brush hairs none of these brushes have shed by the way because every single one of these has been used multiple times and washed multiple times um and so if if you end up with a natural hair brush in particular and it sheds a lot at first they often have what are called guard hairs and they're a bit like guard petals on roses you want to wash the brush a couple times just gently take your hand i'm not pulling i'm just gently you know taking my hand and just kind of touching the brush to see if any of the hairs fall off i'll, I'll gently brush it up against my hand a little bit when I first get brushes, particularly natural hair ones, um, I will do that just to get some of those guard hairs off. And by the way, a similar thing happens with wigs. With wigs, um, you will get shedding initially, and that's because, um, you know, it, it, they usually put a little bit of extra hair on it, and it's not always secured. But that's part of the reason why they put extra hair on it to account for any shedding you get. Um, and if you continue to get shedding after you wash it a couple times and brush it a couple times, I mean, a lot of shedding, um, then you might want to consider how you're brushing it, how you're taking care of it. Are you using a lot of, um, detangling agents up near hand tied lace features because that will make the knots come loose and you will lose hair that way. Um, and sometimes, yes, they're just not made well. Um, I had a NARS makeup brush going back to the makeup brushes, um, where uh, I, it was their Ida Kabuki brush and I was super excited to get it. I love flat brushes. I'm a big fan of, of flat brushes for contouring. Um, and, it, and it had a really nice feel to it. The bristles were nice, they were goat hair, but um, that brush never stopped shedding. I washed it like three times. I did that gentle thing where I try to get the guard hairs off and it would deposit tiny, tiny little broken hairs not even like the full hair shed little broken hairs would come off and I, I I don't want little tiny hairs all over my face like I have to pluck my stash true story because I have PCOS the last thing I want to do is have a lot of little little brush hairs all over my face when I work really hard to not look like I have facial hair so um best tips I can come up with is you know Find good workhorse brushes so you don't have to buy a whole litany of brushes. Um, no one was putting a gun in my head to force me to buy all these. I just do it over time and I like having extra tools at my disposal. If you find something that works for you, get more than one. Get a backup. Like I wish I could ha I could find an extra 217 by Mac, right? Um, since it's discontinued. But I love this Chikahoto brush. I have three of them. They're always handy. I, I always recommend having extra eyeshadow brushes on hand, particularly nice blending brushes, because you never know when you might want to incorporate another color or blend something out a little bit more, or let's say you get a little smudge down here. Like these are very great for utility purposes, if nothing else. That's about it. <laughs> I know I went over a lot of stuff and this has been super long-winded. I hope this has been helpful. Um, uh, you know, there are lots of beauty influencers out there and, you know, my hope is, is that I will actually learn more over time and be able to maybe do an update on this later down the road when I refine my skill set even more. But, uh, 
Until then, thank you for watching. Thank you for recommending that I make this video and hopefully it's been helpful to some of you and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. I wanted to put a little editor's note in here because I was just finishing up the video for the night and uh, my husband brought me some decaf coffee in the Pusheen mug he got me for Christmas. Um, but I wanted to um, let you guys know that I was updating the Patreon rolls, which hopefully are like scrolling in front of you now. Uh, so that way it would include the new folks who signed up. I wanted to make sure I took a moment to thank you guys. And I wanted to especially thank, of course, AKGG and our Miss Kathleen Ryan, who helps with our Instagram. I mean, holy moly. She has signed up to join AKGG in our big wig tier. And I just wanted to take a moment to not only acknowledge that, but also thank everybody else who signed up because it's literally because of you guys that I'm able to branch out and do the kinds of things that are in this video here, which may not be directly wig related or even related to things that I sell. <laughs> but I, my hope is that they're still like helpful, educational, we can all get better at this together and make the most of our wigs because makeup can really complement what you do with the hair. So to me, they just just kind of went together like peas and carrots or like me and my patrons so <laughs> I just wanted to take a moment to thank you guys and if you feel inclined to join us on patreon literally you just have to go to patreon.com and look at sister wigs like spelled funny c-y-s-t-e-r-w-i-g-s you will find me on patreon and you know if you're in the market for hair I I have I have the hookup on that, you know, and just visit my website and see what we got and see if there's anything there that's of interest to you. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye everybody.